How old were you when you realized that the guy who annihilated and drowned Tony Stark's mansion in the Pacific is loosely based on a comic book character called Cold Blood? Do I hear bells ringing? The guy I'm talking about is called Eric Seven, and whether this needless bit of trivia means anything to you or not, it's enough to put me in awe of the MCU's terrific adaptation game. It is clear that there are no parallels to the way the Marvel Cinematic Universe has expanded over the years in terms of quality and complexity. Eric Seven is just one example of a bad guy, but it immediately got me thinking about all the good ones who were easter egged into the MCU. So I'm taking a good look at the superheroes who slipped into the Marvel Cinematic Universe right under our noses today. There are tons of spoilers ahead, so please consider yourself forewarned. Before we jump into it, let's take a quick second to thank Epic Games for sponsoring this video. Season 4 Chapter 2 Nexus War was just released in Fortnite. Team up with some of Marvel's best known heroes and villains like Iron Man, Mystique, Wolverine and Doctor Doom as they fight to stop the planet destroying Galactus. If you haven't already downloaded Fortnite, now is the perfect time to jump in. Use the link in the description below to download Fortnite for free. Die-hard Marvel fans will confirm that the Thor comics are home to some of Marvel's most delightfully weird creations. On the movie side of things, Thor Ragnarok can easily be credited as the most fun and colorful tribute to the comic book lore. The Thor movies leading up to Ragnarok had already sort of set a precedent of establishing long-term connections and justifiably so, as Thor brought in a whole new world into the MCU. The most notable early reference in Thor was that glimpse of the fake Infinity Gauntlet in Odin's vault which even sneaked into Marvel's display at Comic Con that year. But uh, circling back to the main point, Thor Ragnarok takes this legacy forward by showing us a hint of the iconic Beta Ray Bill on the Grand Master's Tower. There supposedly were plans to give Beta Ray Bill some actual screen time in the movie, but they were dropped when it seemed like they didn't do the character enough justice. This might have been a wise move, because boy does Beta Ray Bill deserve a solid tribute. You might have heard the stories of him being worthy of lifting Mjolnir, and if that's not a big enough deal in itself, he was also given his own Warhammer called Stormbreaker. Avengers Endgame also gave a fleeting reference to Beta Ray Bill when it showed Nebula and Gamora fighting at a location that was later revealed to be the Corbinite homeworld, which, as you might have guessed, is BRB's home planet. Thor Love and Thunder would be the perfect time to finally bring him into the MCU, but only time will tell if that long-standing dream comes true. Thor Ragnarok could potentially take over half of this list if we let it, but one iconic easter egg that I cannot let go without mentioning is Man-Thing. The Man-Thing was just a man called Ted Salas before he had an unfortunate accident with Serum SO2 in the Florida swamps. The mutagenic effect of Serum SO2 turned him into the monstrous guardian of the nexus of all realities. Man-Thing appears on the tower in Sakaar along with Bybeast, Ares, Beta Ray Bill, and the Hulk, although it's not clear how he ended up there. Most probably due to the bizarre interdimensional qualities of the magical swamp. The Man-Thing has a complicated journey of losing and regaining his mind throughout the comics. But despite being a beast driven mostly by primitive instincts, he does have empathy, a super cool acid touch, and protects the forests. A healthier alternative to Thanos any day. Chris Evans and Michael B. Jordan have both played the Human Torch in Tim Story and Josh Trank's versions of the Fantastic Four films respectively. Both the actors eventually went on to bag huge roles in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which added a bit of drama to the famous Fox-Marvel tussle. What I'm more interested in for this video though is how Captain America gave a witty nod to the marvelous Human Torch. And I fully intend that pun, no regrets! Anyway, one of the items on display at the Stark Expo in the movie was Jim Hammond, the original Human Torch. Created as an android in the 1930s by Dr. Phineas Horton, the first Torch became a member of the superhero gang called the Invaders, which also incidentally had Captain America as a member. Stan Lee later reinvented him in the 60s as the Johnny Storm who created the Fantastic Four. The Human Torch example has gained new ground in recent times. There is a crucial connection between the Human Torch and Vision which will be very interesting to explore, so I'll spare you the details for you to discover on your own terms if you don't know them yet. We already know that Vision is going to stick around in the MCU for a while through the Disney Plus series called WandaVision. And since everyone is banking really hard on Marvel Studios to give us the Fantastic Four movie we've been dying to see, I really hope for these dots in the MCU universe to connect seamlessly. 
Before we go any further, let's talk about this new Fortnite trailer. Iron Man, She-Hulk, Wolverine? In Fortnite? We've seen our favorite free-to-play battle royale dabble in the Marvel Universe before with their Infinity War crossover a few years back. But the Season 4 Chapter 2 Nexus War looks to be taking it to a whole new level. Galactus is coming to town, and you'll be teaming up with heroes and villains alike to take him down. Drop into the island and visit new and upcoming locations like Doom's Domain, Sentinel Graveyard, and more. And if you pick up the Battle Pass, you'll get access to characters like Iron Man, Storm, Mystique, Doctor Doom, Groot, and She-Hulk, along with an Amnesiac Thor. You'll also be able to take up superpowers like Doctor Doom's Arcane Gauntlets, Groot's Bramble Shield, and Silver Surfer's Board. Thanks to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the link in the description below to download Fortnite for free. Kit Harrington will make his MCU debut as Black Knight with the Eternals, but Black Knight almost had his cinematic entry long before that in Doctor Strange. There is still a very tiny piece of evidence of his hallmark ebony blade in the movie, and coincidentally, the hero who picks it up was easter egged in the MCU herself. I'm looking at Tina Minoru, who was one of the masters of camartage in Doctor Strange. Back when the Doctor Strange movie was lining up for its release, the MCU tie-in series called The Runaways was in the early stages of production. The Runaways features a prominent Minoru storyline, and fans were quick to remember the time when a supposed Tina Minoru was seen with the staff of one in Doctor Strange. Although different actors played the movie and TV Tinas, the fact that the TV show had a shared timeline with the Marvel Cinematic Universe was enough to raise eyeballs about a strange connection. As much as Marvel is fond of Easter eggs, this example might show why they don't always line up well. Tina is one of the good guys in Doctor Strange, which is a bit of a departure from her antagonistic role in The Runaways as a member of the Pride. This slip-up is understandable, because a Runaways movie had been on the studio's horizons for a long time. Kevin Feige brushed off the Minoru connection by saying that the movie never really mentions her name, and called it an easter egg that most people won't even see. Man, I always knew I wasn't like most people, and now I know that Kevin Feige of all people would agree with me. The MCU Spider-Man has seen his best days ever since Tom Holland effortlessly backflipped into the role. Homecoming added even more punch to Spider-Man's entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I'm not talking about Tom's adorable improv scenes with Robert Downey Jr., but a whole bunch of Easter eggs that you'd have to be a casual fan to miss. The most popular one is Miles Morales, the kid who takes up Spidey's role in an alternative universe. Donald Glover had a small role in Spider-Man Homecoming as Aaron Davis. Other than the fact that Aaron tells Spider-Man about his nephew in the city, the film also included hints like the license plate on his car matching up with the comic book in which Miles first appeared. It also may have given a discreet nod to creators Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli by using the name Brian Pacelli in a scene. There cannot be a more spectacular way of hinting at Miles being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the Easter egg might pan into an actual role for Miles in the future. Since cosmic adventures are the recurring theme of the Guardians franchise, it is a wild playing field of cameos and Easter eggs. Director James Gunn would probably never pass up on a chance of sneaking references past innocent audiences, especially if they happen to include the original Guardians. Sylvester Stallone dazzled as an altered version of Staccaro Gord in Guardians Vol. 2, but he wasn't alone. His team, called the Ravagers, were actually reimagined off the original Guardians of the Galaxy. The original Guardians stem from the 31st century of an alternate timeline in which they defended the Earth from a bunch of alien invaders known as the Badoon. These include characters like Charlie 27, Martin X, Alita, and of course, Stakar, which were created back in 1969. The Guardians led by Peter Quill that we've seen in the first two cinematic volumes got the title much later and catapulted to unimaginable movie fame. The Ravagers, on the other hand, might just return for the upcoming third volume since Gunn got prominent names like Stallone, Michael Rosenbaum, Ving Rhames, and Michelle Yeoh attached to these characters. Gunn has been decidedly elusive about this on social media though, so let's not hope too hard yet. When the time came to wipe the Hydra off German soil, no one was more instrumental than a certain howling commando called Major James Falsworth. The World War II veteran became a masked crusader known as Union Jack in the comic books, but his time in the MCU was short-lived. By the time Steve Rogers woke up in the 21st century, James was among those listed dead. And of course, there was no elaborate plotline in place to keep him asleep for 70 years. 
Stakar and Alita were brought into the MCU as the Ravagers, which was pretty cool. We dig character reimaginations and thoughtful tributes. And uh, perhaps their revival was consciously kept comic book inaccurate because the comics also merged the two into one powerful cosmic entity called Starhawk. Starhawk has been around in alternate universes and can do cool stuff like altering the future though, so maybe it wouldn't be so far-fetched to have him in Volume 3. Uh, definitely not as a Sly Stallone crossed with Michelle Yeoh though, that's for sure. When Black Panther ended, Bucky was relieved to find his old self back in the idyllic outskirts of Wakanda's capital. He had also somehow earned the nickname of White Wolf by the kids living there. This might have seemed like an offhanded play of words, but no detail is unremarkable when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. White Wolf, as it turns out, is the name given to T'Challa's adoptive brother in the comics. His story begins when a plane crash in Wakanda kills his parents and the Wakandan natives hesitantly accept him as one of their own. He grows up to be the leader of Wakanda's secret police, which earns him the nickname of the White Wolf. The way the MCU's third phase ended left a lot of plot ambiguities as to what exactly happens to Bucky Barnes. But since he's now going to appear in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+, the Wakandan leg of his arc might get stalled or remain unexplored. If anyone in the MCU would appreciate knowing what the heaviest naturally occurring element is, it would be Cindy Moon. Yep, she's that girl in Peter's decathlon team who was also bitten by a radioactive spider like Peter in the comics. She then spent a harsh 10 years hidden in a specially designed bunker until Peter found out and released her. It's not really known if the Cindy in Homecoming will be the same Cindy Moon who turns into Silk in the comic books, but the character of Silk is indeed getting its own standalone Sony movie. And that brings this topic to an end. Thank you so much for watching our videos, and if you like them, make sure to subscribe to Screen Rant to get regular updates.